killed so many people. I have no idea what I just watched. And I've watched this thing twice now. This movie is like a fever dream wrapped in an acid trip that you would have while half-conscious on the couch at 5 a.m. when Adult Swim changes back into the Cartoon Network. Now, obviously, on the surface, it looks like this is Warner Brothers' attempt to recoup some of the pre-production costs when they and Scott Cawthon parted ways on the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, but every two-bit alleged critic on YouTube is going to point out that painfully obvious fact, so let's just get into this movie in and of itself and avoid comparisons to its obvious inspiration. The film opens by introducing us to the banana splits themselves, Drooper, Flegel, Bingo, and Snorky. We also see that the show has one token human character, Stevie. Get used to Stevie. We're going to be seeing a lot of him later. We pull back to see that the show is on in the middle of the night, and Mom is passed out on the couch. She's awoken by what appears to be Snorky, but is, in fact, her son Harley, who will here and after be referred to as Kid, because this kid doesn't so much act as recite lines. It's the middle of the night. Why are you awake? I'm too excited. I can't go to sleep. It's Kid's ninth birthday, but you really wouldn't know it because while Kid is clearly eight or nine, the script has him written like he's five years old. In addition to Mom, who is seriously overprotective for reasons which will be poorly explained later, there's also older brother, who amazingly emotes even less than Kid does during this movie. Just please... Don't tell Mitch, okay? I can't handle another one of his lectures. And just around this pile of cliches off, we have Asshole Dad. Asshole Dad is an asshole because, one, he's actually older brother's asshole stepdad, and two, because kid likes the banana splits, unicorns, and fairy wings, Asshole Dad clearly doesn't think his offspring is acting manly enough, although the script never actually comes out and says this. Doesn't stop Asshole Dad from stealing Mom's thunder when Kid's big birthday surprise is revealed, though. We are going to the banana splits. Also, older brother gives Kid Chekhov's magic wand, which we won't see again until the end of the movie. The family goes to the studio for the taping, bringing along Kid's reluctant friend. Reluctant friend doesn't really want to be here because she thinks Kid is weird, but her mom made her come along. In the line waiting for the taping, we meet our potential victims. Asshole Dad 2, who is here solely to try to get daughter on the show somehow, because Asshole Dad 2 is one of those kind of parents. We also have Streamer Guy and Girlfriend. Streamer Guy is a huge Banana Splits fan and refuses to give up his phone when studio employee Paige... No, that's not a joke. Her name actually is Paige. Hi, I'm Paige, the audience Paige. Page the page. Guess you could say I was born to do this job. God, I hope not. Asks everyone to check their phones at the door. Girlfriend hides her phone so Streamer Guy can make a big show out of handing over his phone. The splits arrive and Kid, again showing less common sense than a nine-year-old really should, jumps out in front of their banana buggy, which stops inches from him. And when Mom scolds him for being reckless, Kid doesn't seem to get it. And asshole Dad doesn't care. Harley was almost hit by a banana buggy. Jesus, that'd be an embarrassing way to die. Meanwhile, backstage, the near vehicular manslaughter causes creepy engineer guy who built the splits, and allow me to remind you that the splits are robots who have apparently been in use since 1969, to upgrade the software. Drooper is the first to get upgraded, and why the hell is the upgrade station made out of junk cobbled together into an old phone booth? For that matter, why does this entire room look like Jigsaw's junk closet? I thought this was a TV studio. Also backstage, we meet Producer Lady, who, like all producers, is trying to get everything in place for show taping. She's interrupted by this guy, who looks like an intern, but apparently... isn't? Well, I'm the vice president of the programming now. Yeah, but it's old and stupid. And I want to do something cool and edgy, so today's your last show. Um... Pretty sure you can't do that unilaterally, dude. I'm sure there's other people at the network who have to approve that, especially if the budget's already been spent on future tapings. Anyway, the argument happened in front of the workshop, and Drooper apparently heard the whole thing. Couple that with the upgrade going wrong, and Drooper gets the primary symptom of such malfunctions, glowy red murder eyes, and we've got the recipe for Killbot Rampage number 24,968. After seeing how the show is supposed to go, and that Stevie hates his robotic co-stars, older brother heads off to ask Paige if she can arrange for Kid to meet the splits after the show like certain members of the audience, read, future victims, and to hit on her. During his absence, asshole dad goes looking for his phone because all he cares about is work. Paige finds Stevie, who is drunk. Oh, I'm buzzed. After this, I'll be drunk. Yeah, right. 
Anyway, on his way back to the set, Stevie overhears new VP in the lounge gloating over canceling the show and how he plans to sell the splits for parts to the theme park division. Stevie is, of course, ecstatic over this. But after he leaves, new VP and his giant cliché cigar are assaulted by the splits. Why are Bingo and Storky doing it when Drooper's the only one we saw getting the bad upgrade? I don't know, and the movie doesn't care. So the show ends after spinning the wheel of endings, which always apparently lands on Rock Out. Yes, this is relevant. And after some truly disturbing fisheye close-ups of drunk Stevie, the audience leaves and everybody who gets to meet the splits stays behind. Start the kill count! In his dressing room janitor's closet, Stevie gets surprised by the splits and reveals the show's been cancelled, and after telling them what he really thinks of them, he's surprised later by Drooper, who expresses his own opinion of Stevie. <laughs> At the meet and greet, Mom goes off to find Asshole Dad, leaving older brother to look after the kids. Asshole Dad 2 tries to get Paige to tell him where producer lady is, but Paige isn't being cooperative, and girlfriend gets blood on her hands from hugging Drooper. Not that she and Streamer Guy realize that's what it is. I bet it's strawberry from one of the sloppy time pies. Nope, that's not strawberry. Asshole Dad 2 and Daughter wander off to find Producer Lady while Paige is talking to Kid, and Streamer Guy and Girlfriend also sneak off to stream from the set when she goes to stop Asshole Dad 2 from wandering off. Snorky also wanders off, somehow, and Kid and Reluctant Friend have an awkward meeting with the rest of the splits. Mom finds Asshole Dad outside and discovers, surprise, surprise, that he's been fucking his assistant. There's hundreds of these sleeping with your assistant. God, you're such a cliche. Oh shit, the movie's attempting to become self-aware. Older brother shows up and has it out with Asshole Dad, who pretty much makes it clear he resents the fuck out of Mom for not making him the center of her universe. Beth, there's never been an us. There was always Austin, and then there was Harley. Us. What a joke. Except Snorky's lurking in the shadows at the wheel of the banana buggy. Meanwhile, Kid and Reluctant Friend go off in search of Snorky. Asshole Dad 2 and Daughter find Producer Lady and try to force an audition. What you gonna do with all that junk? All that junk inside your trunk. Stop. That is disturbing. Thank you, Producer Lady. You are a hero to us all. When Producer Lady gives details on the cancellation of the show to Paige, Asshole Dad 2 and Daughter go in search of new VP. Streamer Guy and Girlfriend find the other sets for the show, including Flegel's Magic Shop, where Streamer Guy proposes to Girlfriend, who accepts becoming fiancé. Flegel shows up and does some magic. Flegel gets ready to finish the job, with Fiancé ripping the cover off one of his arms in the process. But he hears Kid and Reluctant Friend and goes to intercept them, leaving a severely traumatized Fiancé behind. Kid and Reluctant Friend ask if he knows where Snorky is. Flegel nods in the affirmative, and he takes the kids away. Outside, Snorky finds Asshole Dad. Speaking of asshole dads, asshole dad 2 and daughter find the lounge and think they found new VP, but it turns out to be Drooper who sets asshole dad 2 on fire. Surprisingly, this does not actually kill asshole dad 2. Returning to the main stage, Paige finds mom and older brother. Mom flips out when the kids can't be found. Back outside, asshole dad tries to get help from security, but... Did you hear me? <laughs> He's then run down by Snorky. <laughs> Back inside, we learn that Mom is such a worrywart because original Dad apparently died in front of her for undisclosed reasons. Producer Lady and Paige return, as does Asshole Dad 2, who reveals the splits have gone rogue. Paige goes to call 911 while Mom and older brother head off to find the kids, leaving Producer Lady with Asshole Dad 2. Flegel takes the kids back to the engineering room, where he locks them up with Daughter. Mom and older brother encounter Bingo on the jungle set. Bingo grabs older brother, and Mom gets badass. <laughs> After this, they encounter Traumatized Fiancé and convince her to come with them. Traumatized Fiancé tells her Flegel took the kids. Back in the engineering room, the kids meet Creepy Engineer, who seems like he's going to help them escape, but changes his mind when Bingo's brought back to the lab. Drooper then makes an ominous pronouncement. Hey kids, put on your hap-happiest faces, because the Banana Split Show is about to begin! 
Since Creepy Engineer dropped the keys, the kids make a break for it, and when Creepy Engineer tries to stop them, the kid whacks him with a hot soldering iron and they manage to lock him up instead. Back on the set, Drooper and Flegel force Producer Lady and Asshole Dad 2 to run the obstacle course we saw earlier, after breaking Producer Lady's nose and a couple of fingers. Which gets worse when she slips on the course. <laughs> Okay, that was effective. After running the course, Asshole Dad gets backstabbed by Flegel. Literally. <laughs> and when it seems like Producer Lady has won, she loses. Giant hammer. The kids find themselves trapped in another studio with Snorky. Kid does the Snorky shuffle in an effort to make friends with him, much to the girl's disbelief. This is some messed up stuff right here. Oh, you haven't seen anything yet, kid. The kids go off with Snorky. Kid, because he's clearly an idiot, but who knows why the girls decided to do the same. Paige, after discovering the phones are dead and all the cell phones are smashed, gets chased by Drooper in the halls and discovers producer lady's body in the ball pit. She's found by mom, older brother, and traumatized fiance, and they go to the engineering room where they ask Creepy Engineer how to stop them. Creepy Engineer says they can't be stopped, but they won't hurt the kids. They then hear music coming from the floor, and they find a trapdoor leading downward. What's down there? The show. Mom, older brother, and Paige grab weapons. Traumatized fiance is about to follow, but spots an unfinished animatronic, and finally snaps. Her name is Hootie. Dead because of you. Well, that's not disturbing as fuck. Meanwhile, the other three make a grisly discovery. Oh, Jesus. They hear the kids who were in the audience earlier screaming and find a way to a new set where their literal captive audience are seeing the show from hell. And things only get worse. TV smoking bad for your health. That is the sound of decades of therapy coming. But it gets worse when the wheel of endings is revealed. I'm the vice president of programming. You can't do this to me. While mom, older brother, and Paige try to free the audience, Snorky arrives and chains the other kids to the seat. Kid tries to make an impassioned plea for Snorky not to be a part of this. Snorky, please don't do this. Okay, a moderate, polite request for Snorky to not be a part of this. It apparently works because Snorky gives him the keys to the chains. New VP is spun around, and we get a different ending. Banana Flint! While new VP is being literally torn limb from limb, Kid unlocks the chains, freeing the audience. Paige and older brother get them out, but Mom leaps into the fray. She's overwhelmed and is about to get the same treatment dead Stevie got, but older brother takes out Flegel with a crowbar to the brain pan before getting KO'd by Drooper. Mom's about to be strangled to death, but Kid returns with Chekhov's magic wand and... Everyone tries to get out, but at the last minute, Bingo returns to exact revenge. But Snorky comes out of nowhere, and the strangest fight scene ever committed to film takes place. Why did Snorky change sides? Was it because of the kid? Who knows, because Snorky doesn't talk, and this movie does a lousy job of making non-dialogue-driven plot elements clear. The fight more or less ends in a draw with Bingo and Snorky taking each other out and a tearful goodbye from the kid to his favorite split. Snorky, you'll always be my favorite. Okay, make that an emotionless line delivery that Google Assistant could make sound more dramatic. Outside, the police and paramedics have arrived. You know, you're not as weird as I thought. This show is weird. I'm awesome. No. No, you are not, kid. Sorry. Older brother manages to get with Paige because reasons, and oh look, asshole dad's still alive. Mom cold cocks asshole dad and says she wants a divorce, and everybody leaves asshole dad there like he deserves. Well, that's... okay. It would have been more satisfying if... Oh, I don't believe this!
But who's driving the banana buggy? <laughs> <laughs> this movie is not great. It's cheap, it has elements that make no sense, and calling some of the acting wooden is an insult to trees. But I honestly kind of like it. My son watched this with me, and he summed it up like this. I don't know if this movie's genius or stupid, and that's frighteningly accurate. While I've ragged on the use of cliched character stereotypes in the script, a lot of the acting, especially from mom, producer lady, and traumatized fiance, is actually pretty good. The kills are creative, and they don't shy away from the gore. This is an R-rated movie, and that's exactly what they're going for. And that's kind of the saving grace of this movie. It's ambitious. It takes what it has and does its damnedest to make it work. The humor is black as hell and counterpoints the horror nicely. You can tell everyone involved wants to take what is inherently a truly stupid concept and try to make a good movie out of it. It doesn't completely succeed, but it doesn't completely fail either. There's very little CGI in this movie, instead doing a shit ton of really good practical effects and a couple which may not be 100% there, but certainly aren't boring. In terms of cheesy, stupid, fun movies, this one's a solid contender. Maybe not one of the all-time so bad it's good classics like The Room or the Street Fighter movie, but worth a rental if you're curious. So until next time, this has been Cinematic Masochism. The things I do so you people don't have to. Bye!